I want you to see if you can unpack this phrase for me to try and work out what it means before we even look at what the textbook says. Um, we just described what a sample was, right? So we know what samples are. It's like a little cross-section of the population. So what do you think the sample mean is? What would a sample mean represent? Okay, very good. So it's like, here's this sample that I took, and I averaged them out according to, say, height, for example. Okay? So I can work out the mean of my sample's height. That's fair enough. Why is this plural? Why is this plural? Sample mean, it's not sample mean. Okay, I can take, like, look, here's one example of a sample, but if I do this again, or if I don't ask every 20th person, I ask every 19th person, I will get a whole different sample. And the whole point of a sample, just like the cross-section in our prism is, there's this one, but I could have easily have taken this one, or that one, or there's a whole bunch of different ones, okay? So in a population, there are multiple sample means. In fact, can we just write that down? In a population, there are multiple of these, right? There's not just one sample, there's lots of different ones. That's the whole point of a sample. So if you've got a whole bunch of different samples, and every one you can work out a mean, what does this mean? We looked at this word under our last data statistics um, subunit. What does the word distribution mean? Yeah, okay, so the whole idea is the means will all be different. They'll all be different. So how are they spread out? Where are they? How can we, can we work out a pattern, right? So this is how are the means spread out? That's literally what distributed means. Okay, so here's the example that I want us to have a think about. Here we go. All right. E.G. Um. Okay. So, if you had some dice, right, and I gave you all one, and I said, okay, we're going to roll it twice, okay, and we're going to do it lots and lots and lots of times. Every time we roll it twice, we get a new sample, we get a new sample, and then we can work out the mean of that sample. So I want to try and work out what's the distribution of those means. The first thing we need to do, just like I, I went through the words, is you've got to work out, well, what are the samples? If you've got two dice, how many different ways are there to actually get a different combination? Okay. So I want us to imagine, let's do this without repetition. We'll come back to this phrase in a minute and how we would do it differently if it was with repetition. So let's suppose we can't pick the same number twice. I'm going to pause for a moment, and I'm going to ask you to try and work out how many different combinations are there, how many different samples would there be for if you roll the dice, I roll the die, and you got two different numbers out. I'll give you an example, one of them. 6, 5. That is a sample. Right? That's one of the possible things you could get as you roll them out. Let me give you another one. 5 comma 4. I've just given you two. These are two of the samples, and each of these samples has a mean. Like, you can work out the mean of those, or you can work out the mean of those. We'll get to those sample means in a second. I want you to try and work out how many samples are there that are different in this population. Can you spend two minutes trying to work that out? You can work out however way you like. You can talk to a friend if you want. See if you can get them all down. Off you go. I've heard a lot of different answers, so I want to get some of them down on the board first before we discuss them, okay? I heard 30. Yes. I also heard 15. What other answers? I think I heard 12. No, 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 no. It's 36. We changed it. Yeah, okay. Yeah. 36. That's fine. Have I got other answers? Any yeah. 60. 60, 60. Yeah. Yeah, let's just go for broke. Why not? You know, yeah. Look. I'm just wondering, when it's a repetition, does that mean, like, you can't have 65 and 5 and 6, or you can't have 6 and 6? I, I mean, you can't have 6 and 6. That's a repetition of the number. I think it's 30. Oh, then we need it 30, 30, because then it, yeah. you have to take one up from each column. Yeah. Any other suggestions? That is already Oh, it is already. We did 30 the first time. Okay, all right. So let's bring this together. Now, here's the one, one of the wonderful things about this problem. Um, when you get given an answer, I've told you this before, right? 
When you arrive at an answer for a question, your instinct, if it's a textbook question, is when you just go to the back of the book. But that then begs the question, well, how did they know what the answer was? And as we've demonstrated before, the textbook's not always, it's written by human beings as well, okay? So how can we sort out which one of these it is, okay? Now, I noticed, well, I looked around, I didn't see many. Um, I started writing out answers, right? I started writing them out. There's nothing stopping you from writing out the answers, right? Like you can actually start to think, I mean, these numbers are large, but they're not ridiculous, right? So I could actually start to try and form something of a systematic list here, right? So that's what I'm going to try and do. And then let's see if we can observe the pattern. Okay? Six and five, six and five. I want to do this in a systematic way, not a random way, because I want to make sure I get everything, okay? So after six and five, I'm actually going to go six and four. That's also a possibility, isn't it? And I want to make sure I don't miss any, so I'm going to go 6 and 4, 6 and 3, Oops. 6 and 2, and 6 and 1. Did I get them all? There's 5 there, right? So these are all possible samples from my population of double dice rolls. Okay? Now, you'll notice this line here, I start at 5, 4. I haven't included 5, 5. What was that for? Why was that? Okay, I'm not including repetition. I haven't included 5, 6 either. Why not? Okay, now, think. Think with me. Because it's the same numbers, it's just a different order. You need to pose yourself the question because you all have enough knowledge to work out why 5, 6 is not in this list. What are we trying to work out? We're trying to work out, like this is not just dice rolls. These are all samples. And we're trying to work out the sample means, correct? Now, think about this, and think about this. Are these the same sample, or are they different ones? It's the same, because it's, it's the same numbers, just in a different order. So, if I said, if I said, okay, I'm going to take a sample, a sample, right? of the school and I'm going to compose that sample of 12MG22. I just decided that's the way I'm going to do it. Does the sample change if you walked in in alphabetical order or if you walked in in height order or if you walked in in, you know, reverse alphabetical or anything like that? What? So are you saying like if we got a bag of marbles yep. and we took out a blue marble and a green marble yep. and then we put those down and we took out a green and then a blue? Mm -hmm. That's the, yeah, more or less. Why would you choose a metaphor? Yeah, too many metaphors. Okay, let's just pause here. Let me help you recognize these are the same samples. These, these are identical samples. It's the same role, the same people, if you like, that are in there, right? Imagine if I had, instead of, um, you're 12, stay with me. This is a tricky idea. So I want to make sure you don't miss any beats in so you have all the pieces. If these six numbers were actually people, so I took the six people in the front row, and which person I end up putting into the sample is just defined by their number, right? If Rebecca's a six and Jess is a five, then rolling six and five is the same as rolling five and six, isn't it? When I work out this, it's the same people, and they're going to have the same sample mean. Do you agree? Okay, so. This is why I have not included that. I skipped 5, 6. I skipped 5, 5. I've got 5, 4. What's next? 5, 3. And then? And then? What do you think? Does it look okay so far? Now, I can keep going and doing this, right? And in fact, you'll see a pattern. The next one, I have to skip 4, 6. Why am I skipping 4, 6? Because it's already there. Because I already have it. Right? I'm going to skip 4, 5 as well. Why? Because I already have it. I'm going to skip 4, 4 because... So I'm going to start there. Yeah? So where does my pattern lead me? What do you think? Are you satisfied? Why do my rows start six, five, four, three, two? What happened to one? Why haven't I got any ones starting? Well, you can't have one, one, right? But then when you think about all the rest of them, 
I actually do have the rose starting with one. Do you notice it? Do you see where it is? It's on a diagonal. It's just over here. So you see, because I did this in a systematic way, I have it all there. Okay, come on, count them up. How many? Okay, now, what's really interesting is, yes, that's correct. This is not the only way to do it, because obviously listing is okay in this case. 15 was not too hard. But if I gave you not like a, a die with six sides, but a die with 60 sides, which is not that crazy, like a group of 60 people, that's not that difficult to imagine, right? You don't want to do this, do you? You don't want to do this. So how will we go about this in a more systematic way? Just beside, over here. Okay. I want you to draw out one of these. Do you remember these? If we list each of these... Oh, I need another one. Oh, that's hilarious. Let's just put them on there. If I list all of these out, right? This is like the first roll. There are six possibilities. But then you have to roll again. Now, we don't have to draw the entire thing to actually work out what's going on. You can have six from there. You can have six from there, right? But I'm going to stop. You can't actually have six. Why not? Because that's repetition. There's repetition in quiz. So how do I adjust this to make it a little bit better? Make it five. Just five, right? Now, think, look. I'm not even going to draw the rest. You've got enough to see a pattern here. There are six branches here. Every single one of the next level is going to have five. So how many little branches will I have at the end? It'll be six, and each one is a group of five. So that's six times five, which is 30. Hold on a second. 30 was one of the answers up here, but it's clearly not an answer here. What's wrong? What's the relationship between 30 and 15? It's not a coincidence. One is half the other. Why is the correct answer exactly half of what we get out of this answer. Because you've got the swapped orders of the actual answers. So one of the options here is 1, 6, right? And then one of the options here will be 6, 1, which we decided was the same sample, right? So exactly half of these will be the other ones in reverse order. Do you agree? So you should divide by 2, which gives you 15. Does that make sense? 